Previously, on Everlasting Shenzhou, Milton Cheng and Feng Huaxian went out on a date as Rao Singha and Kan Haoshar followed them on Rao's magic stealth cloud, a cloud conjured up by Rao with the ability to travel invisible at night. After spending time at the Jumbo Floating Restaurant, the date ended up at Milton's mansion, where Feng Hua performs the sleeping song of the Dancing Wind Flower, a hypnotic song and dance which puts Milton in a trance and ends with Feng Hua kissing him to sleep. Feng Hua's performance was successful as she went ahead to carefully open Milton's fabric-covered gourd, suspected to be Rao's everlasting Shenzhou. However, the gourd was revealed to be an ordinary gourd, as Kurokage appears holding Rao's everlasting Shenzhou. Kurokage proves to be too fast and too elusive as he battled Rao and Feng Hua. But after temporarily being stopped by Feng Hua's gust attack, Kat, who stayed hidden and observed the battle, took advantage and manages to hit Kurokage with her hell hip cannon, breaking his arm. Kurokage flees with Rao's everlasting Shenzhou after delivering the blinding blast, causing a security alarm on Milton's property. The trio managed to escape via the magic stealth cloud, leaving Milton behind. It is now January 11th, 2020. Witnesses of the divine light in the sky over Milton's mansion at Victoria Peak made its way through social media. This would be considered the second strange phenomenon that occurred in Hong Kong next to Curtis Lowe's death. This caught the attention of Ligon Wu, who at around 9.30 a.m. arrived at Milton's mansion. However, Ligon was turned away by the guards. Ligon decided to use his agility to sneak around the mansion. Ligon stops to overhear guards conversing in Cantonese, where they mentioned that Milton, though asleep, cannot be awakened. Ligon moves on and arrives at the patio where he could see Milton peacefully asleep on his lawn chair. Ligon then notices a lip print on Milton's forehead. Wind began to pick up as flower petals flew around, and the haunting melody of Feng Hua's song lingered. Guards approaching, Ligon ducked out of sight and out of the premises. Later on, Ligon browsed through his phone for Milton's IG page for clues of where he found a selfie of Milton at the Jumbo restaurant and another selfie with Feng Hua Jian at their table. Ligon then went further to past pics, finding a selfie photo of Milton and Barty McWiggan, Nguy Lin. Oh, why were they in Gui Lin? Could it be? Ligon then went to Barty's IG page, where he found Barty posted a training video in a gym located in Hong Kong. Perhaps Barty McWagan will give me answers. Ligon puts his phone away and begins to track down Barty. At 10 a.m., Rao, Kat, and Feng Hua spent time on a beautiful sunny day at Kowloon Tsai Park. Rao meditates under a tree while Feng Hua practices her routine with two fans for the concert. Kat is browsing on her phone as she spots a random post on her IG page, but the picture of the divine light over Victoria Peak nearby Milton's home. Kat's phone started to ring as she could see that the incoming call is from Henry. Kat answers the phone. Hi, Kat. So, judging from the recent posts on your IG page, I see that you're in Hong Kong now. Oh, yeah, I'm chilling in Hong Kong. Uh, there was this dance concert happening here that Feng Hua really wanted to audition for, uh, for the Lunar New Year, and she got in. So, we're staying here for the month. That's terrific. Congrats to her. I've also been noticing the weird news there. 
about a billionaire who got vaporized and now some strange light appearing over Hong Kong? Oh, yeah. A lot of strange things are happening lately. <laughs> Hell of a start to 2020, huh? Not to mention the flu going around. People are getting sick back at home. A lot of my friends in my dance company caught the bug. It seems something is going around here in Hong Kong, too. I have my everlasting Shinjo with me, so I'm not too worried about it. About that... I'm starting to have a feeling that those incidents are related to the everlasting Shenzhou. Uh, they're not, Henry. Uh, don't worry about it. Please, just take care of yourself over there, okay? Uh, great hearing from you. <laughs> Same to you. Talk later. <sighs> <sighs> uh, hey, Feng Hua. I think I figured out how to knock out that masked man. Really? I'd like to hear it. The guy's fast, but it seems like once he gets hit, he panics. So once he gets hit, we can grab him and knock him out completely. How are we going to do that? Teamwork, that's how. Remember what I said about creating a tag team move with our hip attacks back in Guilin? What I have in mind is that we both grab him by the wrist so he has nowhere to go, and then we can quickly smash his head in with our hip attacks at the same time. Interesting. Combine the Hell Hip Cannon and Heaven Hip Cannon? Yeah! Uh, we just gotta practice it on someone. I see you looking at me, Cat. Don't even think about it. Oh, <laughs> I guess you're still with us on Earth, Rao. But I did notice that Kurukaga doesn't like to get hit. So yes, Cat, that will take teamwork to land a shot at him. And all it takes is one shot. Totally. Still, I think it's worth a shot to try out a new tag team move. Maybe we can go and practice at the Dancing Fist Kung Fu School. Maybe Ligon may have some pointers. Yes, Ligon did say we can work out at his school. Oh, it's starting to rain. Shall we head out to the school now? Wait. As the rain continues to pour down, Rao stands still as he silently focuses on its sound. Rao could hear the flapping wings of an incoming hummingbird flying towards him. And then, Rao catches the hummingbird with his hand. Whoa! Nice catch, Rao! Stop the rain, Fangwa. Yes, Rao Senshin. As the rain stops, Rao releases the hummingbird from his hand as it flies towards the blue sky. Hmm. I think I have an idea. At 11.15 a.m., the trio travel to Wan Chai to stop by the Dancing Fist Kung Fu School. They enter inside, where they are welcomed by Grace Yi. Feng Hua, hi. Hi, Grace. Is Ligon here? Ligon is in a meeting, so he'll most likely see you at rehearsal. He left me in charge of looking after the school. Are those your friends? Yes, this is Kat. She's my friend from the United States. Kat, this is Grace. She's one of the dancers in the concert. Hi, uh, pleasure to meet you, Grace. Pleasure to meet you too, Kat. And this is Rao Xiansheng. Rao Xiansheng? <laughs> Feng Hua talks about you a lot during rehearsal breaks. <laughs> A pleasure, Grace. So, what brings you all here? Oh, uh, Feng Hua and I just want to use the school to practice a tag team move. Tag team move? Like pro wrestling? Yeah, something like that. Do you have a practice dummy or something similar by chance that we can practice on? Um, I have a grappling dummy. I use it to practice my grappling moves. Oh, sweet! Yeah, that totally works. Cool. Follow me. As Grace leads Kat and Feng Hua to where the grappling dummy is located, Rao looks around the school, seeing a variety of pictures that includes Ligon posing with his lion dance trophy with his teammates. And then, Rao spots a beautiful white fan with a sun design on it, framed and hung on the wall. Grace approaches Rao. Do you need any assistance, Rao Xiansheng? Just call me Rao. And I'm alright, thank you. Uh, by the way, 
Fang Hua told me that you helped her escape from Milton's bodyguards after rehearsal. I appreciate that. I'm happy to see that Fang Hua made a friend in the concert who looks out for her. Of course, I really don't like those men. I think Milton's bodyguards are triad. But I don't want to jump to conclusions. Ah, so I see that you have an eye on that fan. Do you know about this fan? Ligon tells me that it is a magic sun fan or something like that. Story is that a powerful magician can summon a cloud that be ridden only during the daytime. It is part of a pair of fans that can summon traveling clouds to ride on. Another is a moon fan. Whoever holds that fan can summon a cloud that can turn the rider invisible only at night. When combined together, it will summon a shape-shifting cloud which will allow its rider to travel the world. I think Ligon is making it up. But it's fun to imagine leaving and traveling the world away from here. This has to be the other half. Huh? Oh, nothing. Uh, mind if I trained on that wooden dummy over there? Not at all. Go ahead. Ah, thank you. Ralph finishes as he notices Grace staring at him in amazement, along with everyone else in the school. At 12.30pm in downtown Hong Kong, Barney McGuigan is in the middle of another sparring session at Chung King Gym, where he is mercilessly punching his sparring partner. Father is rush! The sparring partner falls down to the canvas, creating a pool of his own blood. However, Barty continues to pulverize his partner as his entourage simply looks on. Minutes later, Ligon Wu arrives at the gym, seeing two of Barty's entourage carrying the bloodied sparring partner away. Oh, Barty really needs to calm down. We can't keep carrying these Bartys out like this. <laughs> Want to tell that to his face? Hell no. Hey, someone's coming. Set the body aside. What do you want? I'm here to see Barty McGuigan. I'm an acquaintance of Milton Chang. Oh boy. You must be here for the sparring session. Follow me. Hey, Barty. Someone's here to see you, mate. Who's that? Hello. I'm Ligon Wu. Milton's been telling me you are in need of sparring partners. <laughs> you know Milty? How you know him? I'm directing his dance concert for the Lunar New Year. Oh, are you? Oh, that's right. I did see you on Milton's post on the IG. <laughs> I asked for a fighter and Milton brings me a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> dancer, it's just one of my many occupations. I'm an instructor at the Dancing Fist Kung Fu School in Wan Chai. Oh, you know Kung Fu? What <laughs> well, That's quite interesting. How much do you weigh? Around 145 pounds. A featherweight? I weigh you by 40 pounds and you want to spar with me? I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Alright then. Since you know Milton, I'll let you. Before you start, Sign the waiver. If you get seriously hurt, it's on you. So you better be good, mate. All right, body. The waiver is signed. Hey, that's Mr. McGuigan to you. Get a headgear. Don't trip on your way into the ring. Ligon wears his headgear and walks up to the ring and notices the blood stain near the apron of the ring. Ligon effortlessly did a front somersault into the ring to avoid the stain. The somersault surprised Barty. Well, look at that! A show-off! I do the showing off around here. You focus on making me look good! We'll do straight-up kickboxing for five rounds. Ring the bell! Play music! Ligon dances to the rhythm of the music, leaving Barty mystified. Hey, who's playing that 
music! Cut this fucking music off! Cut! Lycan quickly kicks Barty from behind, which startled and enraged Barty. The bell has already rung, Mr. McGuigan. I suggest you pay attention. Motherfucker! Barty attacks while Ligon evades and hits Barty with self taps to the body. What's with these fucking light taps? Who the hell has that a boombox on? Nobody brought in a boombox. I can't see where it's coming from. This isn't a dance club! Shut that shit off! Stop music! How did you do that? I have a device that plays my favorite music on my voice command. You got to relax, Mr. McGuigan. Milton sent me to help you, and that is what I'm here to do. That's with the fucking salsa? Don't play that music! Get serious! <laughs> serious? From what I heard, your challenger is a very evasive fighter. If you couldn't touch me when I'm relaxed, there is no way you can handle me being serious. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll destroy you before you even try! Ring the fucking bell! Come on, let's go! Oh, he's done it now. Bertie's pissed. Someone get the stretcher. Forget about a stretcher. <laughs> this guy will need a bully bag. Lugan begins to bounce on his feet as Barty rushes towards him. Barbarous! Rush! Lugan evades each and every one of Barty's strikes. God damn it! Barty begins to slow down. Once Barty stops moving, Lugan suddenly strikes with his own combination. Shanghai Salsa! <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm seeing? This guy is tagging, Barty! Look at that footwork! Ligon delivers a series of consecutive strikes that stuns Barty. Barty goes for a double leg takedown, but Ligon evades smoothly as he throws a spinning roundhouse kick, which floors Barty, shocking Barty's entourage. Barty got floored! Nobody ever knocked down Barty! Well, looks like I got carried away. I don't wish to seriously harm you any further. I don't want to seem rude, but can I take my leave now, <gasps> Mr. McGuigan? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you, you're free to leave, mate. Checks in the mail. Oh. Lycan starts walking out, but then walks back to Barty. Oh, before I go... I have questions. Did you go to Guilin with Milton a while back? Guilin? Yeah, I think so. Vaguely, we went for drinks. Do you remember Milton mentioning a drink called the Everlasting Shenjo? I don't know. I think so. Hmm. Have a nice day, Mr. McWagan. And good luck on your title defense. <laughs> then again... The luck of the Irish is always on your side. Play music! Lycan <laughs> dances his way out of the gym with Barty's entourage looking on shocked and dumbfounded. It is now 8.05 p.m at the Hong Kong Cultural Center, where rehearsals for the Lunar New Year dance concert is entering its second week, as the dancers are practicing with water sleeves which consist of long blue silk sleeves that create an elegant flowing movement. Lycan oversees the dancers with great focus. Group one, flow to the right. Group two, flow to the left. And now, fan shed. Good. Now break away. Feng Huang, Grace, do battle. Feng Huang and Grace face off as the dancers look on. Huh? Cha. Dodge this. Grace throws a sleeve towards Feng Huang, but she dodges and throws one of her own. 
both perform Fan Shen to the right, and then perform Fan Shen to the left. Feng Hua jumps high in the air and quickly throws her sleeve towards Grace, who does a backward somersault. Grace then retreats exiting stage left, as Feng Hua performs Fan Shen in victory, as the other dancers join in performing Fan Shen in unison. Beautiful work! Fingwa, Grace, great battle! Definitely go further. Now, before we all leave, I'd like to remind everyone to stay healthy. Two of our dancers had to drop out due to this flu that's been going around. I strongly advise to keep yourself healthy. That'll be it for tonight. As always, keep practicing. That was a very fun duel, Fenghua. Your fan shen is so beautiful. So is yours, Grace. You're very good in handling water sleeves. It's graceful. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You could say water sleeves are my specialty. I love them. It allows me to express myself freely. And... Grace uses her sleeve and extends it to grab her bag from a distance. The sleeve wraps around the bag and is yanked off and lands into the arms of Grace. Definitely comes in handy if I need to get anything from afar. <laughs> I would love to learn your techniques. Hey, Fenghua. Yes, Sligan? I need to talk to you alone for a moment. Please, follow me. Okay. We'll talk later, Fenghua. Ligan leads Fenghua at the stage at the Grand Theater, where it is half-lit. Fenghua could see a set of Zhang poles all at different levels, all leading up to one sole platform with a pedestal on it. What's all this? The stage crew have set up the construction that will make up the third segment, the Miracle Battle. The choreography consists of two dancers, the heroic maiden and a demon that terrorizes the world spreading its plague. The two battle each other to reach the pedestal with the Shen Cheng Miracle Drink on it. I have you in mind as being the heroic maiden, but your partner who's supposed to play the demon is one of the dancers that dropped out. Her mother in Beijing is very ill, and she just had to drop everything to take care of her. I'm sorry to hear that. Seems like people everywhere are getting sick. Guilin has been suffering from it too. Other than Grace, none of the other dancers are well equipped in stage combat and can handle the demands of this sequence. So, I decided that I will play the demon in this performance. You? Yes. I know that I'm being selfish, but I have never seen a performer quite like you. I want to take this opportunity to perform with you on stage. You give me too much credit, Ligon, but I would love to perform with you. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that. For the Lunar New Year opening festivities, I'm in need of lion dancers. Would you and Kat like to participate? These are paying gigs. I would like to. I'll ask Kat, but that sounds very fun. Good. And there's something else I'd like to talk to you about. Ligon takes out his phone and presents a picture of the divine white light breaking through the night sky over Victoria Peak. This happened nearby Milton's home. This picture is all over social media. Most people think it's a UFO, but I highly doubt it. I know that you had a date with Milton last night. I heard from his bodyguards that he's asleep, but he can't wake up. Please, tell me what happened to Milton. I... um... Please tell the truth. All I did was sing him a song. A song? Just a song for him to go to sleep to. That's the truth. Feng Hua, you're from Guilin. You perform these magical abilities, and you're here in this concert related to the Shen Chang Miracle Drink, which has the same capabilities as the Everlasting Shenzhou. You know about the Everlasting Shenzhou? I know of its legend. Took me a while to figure it out, but the dots were starting to connect. How did Milton get a hold of it? Milton sent a man to steal the everlasting Shenzhou for him. 
Rao Xiansheng is here in Hong Kong to get it back. When you say Rao Xiansheng, you mean Rao Sing Ha? Yes. Damn it, Milton. I own a bar in Wan Chai called Ba Fei Hong. Can you invite Rao Sing Ha to meet me there? Why for? I'll help him get the everlasting Shenzhou. He will? But whatever magical spell you did to Milton, break it after I speak with Rao Sing Ha. Milton owes me payment. I'll put in a good word to Rao Xiansheng. Thank you, Feng Hua. I'll look forward to meeting him. Lai Yin walks off the stage as Feng Hua looks on at the set construction of the Zhang poles. At 10 p.m. at Regal Sky Hotel, Feng Hua reports back to Kat and Rao about her meeting with Lai Gin. So Lai Gin knows about the everlasting Xinjo? Apparently so. And he knows about you too, Rao Xiansheng. He wants to speak with you. He says he'll help you get the everlasting Shenzhou back. The dancing fist wants to speak with me. I don't know. Ligon seems like a cool dude, but he still works for Milton. Ligon is inviting us to do a lion dance performance at the opening celebration. Would you like to perform with me, Kat? Oh, man. It sounds fun, but... Oh, I don't know. It's a paying gig. I'm in. Great. Really, Rao Xiansheng, I trust Ligon. I have a good feeling about him. If you trust him, Feng Hua, then I'll hear what he has to say. And so, arrangements were made for Rao and Ligon to meet for the following night. On January 12th at 8pm, Rao, Kat, and Feng Hua travel to the bar located at the Wan Chai district. Using the magic stealth cloud, the trio arrive in Wan Chai, unnoticed by the pedestrians, as they walk up to a neon sign that reads, Bar Fei Hong. This is the place, Rao Xiansheng. Bar Fei Hong. <laughs> Loving the name. Ligon is also a bar owner. Ligon seems to be a jack of all trades. All right, you two relax and wait out here. I'll see for myself what the dancing fist is made of. Okay, Rao Xiansheng. Ligon said the bar is closed to customers, but the door is open for you. You can go in. Rao enters Bar Fei Hong, where you can see Ligon Wu waiting for him behind the counter. Hello, welcome to Bar Fei Hong. Do you often wear sunglasses at night, Rao Sing Ha? What's it to you, Ligon Wu? <laughs> it's an honor to meet a legend such as yourself. Please have a seat. It's a nice place you have here. So, you own this bar? Yeah, helps supply my income along with the other jobs I have. It's not easy living in Hong Kong with one source of income. I've heard many stories about you from some of my customers. To the ordinary man, they think it would be nothing but fairy tales and drunken nonsense. But I'm a firm believer of magic. I just never thought someone such as yourself would actually agree to meet with me here. May I offer you a drink? I have my own, thank you. Rao reveals Kat's everlasting Shenzhou to Lycan's shock. <sighs> That's the everlasting Shenzhou? But... This is Kat's everlasting Shenzhou. You met already in your line dance class. Yes, of course. What a small world. But how is this hers? How else? She won it? Impossible. She defeated you in a fight? <laughs> she defeated me in a very long game of rock, paper, scissors last year in Guilin. But through that game, we got drunk, and we became very good friends. Sounds like an interesting time. I never knew you can allow challengers to play games with you. I don't do that with everyone. I allowed Kat because she saved Feng Hua's life from some very horrible people. Oh, I can see why those two are close. Is Kat traveling with you? She and Feng Hua are here with me to help me get my wine back. Wow traveling with two beautiful women. Lucky guy. 
Let's get to the chase. You invited me here because you want to help me get my everlasting Shenjo back. Why do you want to help? I'm the one who told Milton about the stories of the everlasting Shenjo when he visited the bar. Apparently, he got curious, and his curiosity caused you trouble. I feel responsible, so I want to make things right. I see. Also, a friend of Honghua is a friend of mine. With all due respect to the women I've worked with, I've never seen anyone quite like Feng Hua. She's a very special woman that can captivate the world with her dance. I love to help her in any way I can. You've seen her fly, right? Yes. Another reason why she is so special. Do you know why she can fly? Why? Years ago, Feng Hua had a very horrible illness and I went to Mount Penglai to challenge the 80 mortals for the everlasting Shenzhou. I won the everlasting Shenzhou, and Feng Hua was cured, but she consumed too much of it in one go. Her ability to fly is a side effect. Oh! Rao teleports behind the counter next to Ligon, which surprised him. <gasps> Rao teleports back to his seat. Teleportation is my side effect. If Milton distributes them to other people, there is no telling how they'll drink it. If a person with evil intentions drinks too much of it, and also develops side effects, that will cause calamity. I went through a lot of trouble to win the everlasting Shenju. The gourd holds a sentimental value to me. I can understand. I'll talk to Milton. Milton doesn't come off as the type that can be reasoned with in a sensible manner. A masked man named Kurokage attacked Feng Wan I in Guilin and stole the everlasting Shenzhou on Milton's behalf. Milton has no honor. He sends his men to do his dirty work for him. Rousing her. I was once a fighter in the underground circuit, but I retired young to live a healthier life. I'm one of the reasons why Milton has the wealth he has besides living off his parents' money. He'll listen to me. Like I said, I'll talk to Milton, but on one condition. Ha! Huh. I knew there's a catch. Please hear me out. Once you get your gourd back, let me challenge you to a contest to win a gourd of the everlasting Shenzhou. You want a gourd? I want my own gourd. My business will be booming if I put this drink in the menu. But unlike Milton, it will be exclusive to Ba Fei Hung and will be handled responsibly. The more money I make, the more I can help the community. How come you're not working with Milton if you wanted a gourd? You work for him already. For the dance concert, yes, but that's it. The paycheck is the only reason why I tolerate him. <laughs> Give me an empty glass. Mikein gives Rao an empty glass as he pours a glass of Shenzhou and hands it towards Ligon. Have a drink, Dancing Fist. Ligon hesitated for a moment before drinking the glass of Shenzhou. Wow, the taste lives up to his legend. Huh, now I really want one. Feng Hua tells me that you're a fan of Drunken Master. Oh yes, one of my favorite movies. Drunken Master 1? Or Drunken Master 2? Both. Good answer. Now I assume you know of the 80 mortals. Yes, of course. I love performing the 8 drunken gods technique. Good. I can give you an opportunity to win a gourd. Once you help me get my gourd back, that is. But you need to do more than talk to Milton to earn it. How can I prove myself to you to make you see that I can earn it? Grab a bottle of your favorite drink. Okay. Here's my favorite drink. I love some good Baijiu. Rao takes the bottle of Baijiu and sees that it is half empty. Rao pours Cat's everlasting Shenzhou into the bottle. Rao shakes the bottle and passes it to Ligon. Hop over the counter, Dancing Fist, and face off with me. Ligon does a front somersault yeah. over the counter and stand face to face with Rao as Cat and Fenghua quietly observe the scene from outside. To prove yourself, I will ask you eight questions on identifying the 80 mortals. 
You must answer all eight questions correctly and consecutively. If you miss one, we will start over. But answer one correctly. You will attack me with the technique of the god you answered correctly. Whether you get one right or one wrong, you must drink from the bottle of the Shenju Mix Baijiu. Do you follow me? I think so. All right. Let's begin. Who is the god that rides a white mule backwards and possesses the powerful double kick? Ah, uh, Lo. Correct. Now attack me with Chan Kuo Lao's technique. <laughs> kick! Kick! <laughs> Chan Kuo Lao and his mule are strong kickers. Good. Now drink from the bottle. <laughs> wow, good stuff! Next, who is the god who holds a huge pot in his arms? Han Zhong Lei. Good. Han Chong Li is a strong one. Next, who is the god who collects herbs and has a powerful waste attack? Lam Choi Wo. Dan Tai Ging Zhao Lam Yu Po. Lan Sai Ho is a strange character when I met him. Next question. Who's the patron of actors who wields the throat lock? Toga Kyo! Catch your throat. Zhao Ko Chu's throat lock is vicious. Next question. Who's the god who plays the flute with his powerful wrist? Han Sun Zi! A hell of a flute player is Han Jiangzi. <laughs> Three more to go. Here's an easy one. Who's the god, or should I say, goddess, who shows off her body? Oh, I know! Ho Xin Gu! Zui Zhao Gu Lang So Sun Choi! Good commitment to Ho Xian Gu. Two more. Who's the god with an ill temper and a crippled leg? Ti Kui Li. Ti Kui Li. Yes. Last but not least, who is the leader of the eighty mortals? Li Dong Ban. Liu Tung Pin, the god with eternal strength. Good. The I pass roasting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you will. Uh. Oh. Ligon passes out on the ground. Rao grabs Ligon and places him back on the stool. Rao pours a shot glass of Shenzhou and places it next to Ligon before exiting the bar. As Rao arrives outside, Kat and Feng Hua approach him. So, Ligon is a dancer, an instructor, a director, a bar owner, and a drunken master. That's so cool. What do you think of him now, Rao Xinxin? I think we got ourselves an ally. And once I get my gourd back, a worthy challenger. Meanwhile, at Milton's mansion, Kurakage looks over Milton who remains asleep in the living room. Kurakage takes a drink out of Rao's everlasting Shenzhou and spits it on his face. But it has no effect. Kurukage takes out his phone and speed dials a number. Cheng is still asleep. Feng Hua Jian really put a powerful sleeping spell on him. Do you want me to continue to keep an eye on him? As you wish. Kurukage hangs up as his dark eyes hover over Milton Cheng as he continues dreaming of wonderful dreams of Feng Hua Jian. The drama surrounding Rao's everlasting Shenzhou continues, and the start of the Lunar New Year will transpire 
next time on Everlasting Shenzhou.